Adam, th- oh, I, was, Adam I can't call you Adam. Gilly, well, I just... <laughs> I was going to say, I thought, am I in trouble? It's only Adam when it's from my, my mum or my wife when I'm in trouble. Okay. So, yeah. And I am neither of those people. Good evening and welcome to DXB Today. Let's have a look at what we have got coming up on tonight's show. We're taking lessons in the School of Humanity with founder and CEO Raya Bidshahri. And a big old focus on education today, off to the principal's office we must go. And I caught up with Australian cricket legend Adam Gilchrist. So a lot to look forward to then over the course of the show uh, and I'm looking forward to it because it's a reuniting of uh, us after in a brand new season and a brand new look as I well. I know, this is uh, my first time in the season three. I'm loving the studio, loving the couches. Very comfy, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, uh, no, honestly, it's really exciting. I, had, uh, I know you've already done all your catch-ups and your summers and everything. Um, anything exciting happening, Tom? Got any gossip for me? I've got plenty of gossip, none that we can talk about on air, obviously, Shame. at the moment, but we'll do it in the chair, in the green room afterwards. Um, but yeah, one thing, one little thing that I noticed this week, obviously we've had a big old focus about the fact that DXB today is back and yeah. we are here to basically shine a light on this extraordinary city yeah. and the wider Emirates as a whole, but give you an idea of what's going on around town, from the big gigs to the small bits and pieces, the small initiatives that maybe don't get as much spotlight. Um, one thing we've been talking about a lot throughout the week is that it's going to be a busy one. All of us have been here for a while and given the evidence of what's coming up, it's going to be a busy one. We've seen it of the course of the last week and one thing that I really liked was of course uh, the use of the Coca-Cola Arena. Uh, big names down at the Coca-Cola Arena oh, earlier sure. on this week. And it just sort of made me think about the fact you've been down at Arena down in Abu Dhabi. We've got our own arena here in Dubai. The arenas are going to get used a lot. In the exactly. Louis, you've been there this week. I was. I watched Trevor Noah earlier on. It was quite exciting. And of course, it was packed. Every single seat filled. And that's what I like. I like the fact that, yeah, we're talking about the outside and we're coming into the season where the great outdoors will be opened up and there's going to be a lot of sort of events in the great outdoors. Best. And yet, you've still got these great sort of purpose-built stadiums Absolutely. as well. So lots to look forward to. And as you say, like the, the events are getting bigger and bigger and better and better. We're very lucky here being in the, in the centre of the world and everyone likes to come to the UAE, so. The only little piece of advice we would give at this stage is you probably want to leave a little bit earlier than expected to get to <laughs> yeah. any of these gigs at the it's moment. True. It's true. Right, we are not alone. Our guest co-host today is making waves on social media at present, uh, thanks to his creative TikTok videos that are doing the rounds. A day in the life of a Dubai teacher, uh, which begs the question to us all. Let's find out who our guest co-host is today. Hi, I'm Thomas. I'm a primary school teacher and content creator here in Dubai, and I'm looking forward to joining you today. Thomas will be joining us in the studio to discuss his journey and his passion for teaching. But before that, here are five things you didn't know about schools here in Dubai. Dubai is a melting pot of different nationalities and cultures and that reflects in the diverse educational landscape of the city. The private schools here aren't one size fits all. Here are five things you didn't know about them. As of November 2022, there were 326,000 private school students in Dubai. The number may be slightly higher now, given the population surge the city has seen in the past year. Ahmed is the most common student's name in the city's private schools, with over 3,500 Ahmeds enrolled. In 2023, 10 private schools in the UAE were named among the best 15 in the Middle East. The city is home to more than 200 private schools with 17 different curricula. 36% of Dubai's private school students are enrolled in British curriculum schools. More than 2,800 students are named after flowers. There are more than 1,000 Zahras and 800 Yasmeens enrolled in Dubai's private schools. The city currently has 3.6 million people. By 2040, it's set to more than double to 7.8 million. I 
fascinating. So obviously today on the show, we're talking all things education. So really excited to be joined in the studio today by teacher and content creator, Thomas Blakemore. Welcome, how are you? Very good, thank you for having me. Well, we're honored. I've actually followed you on TikTok for a really, really long time. So I was really excited to meet you earlier on. How on earth did this all start? Because not many people have a title of teacher and TikTok trend. <laughs> So I started content creation when I taught in the UK. Unfortunately, um, children back in the UK were not watching the right type of content. And I decided that I was going to start creating some content just so that they weren't watching certain elements. Interesting. What was your first sort of move? What were your first videos then? So a lot of my content was when I was created in the UK, I decided to create about my holidays because the children in the school I taught in at the first place, in the first place, they wouldn't necessarily be able to access some of those places. So I was actually coming to Dubai and decided to create some little travel vlogs about going to Dubai so that the children could watch oh, those. Nice. Because it's a great idea uh, because obviously you've got a sort of special connection with the kids that you're educating at the same time you're sort of on their level to a certain degree but isn't that breaking the golden rule of teaching that you know weekends are sacrosanct you know what goes on at the weekend stays at the weekend doesn't it <laughs> I, I completely understand yeah for, for, for sure but i think for the children it's good for children to have positive role models online at the moment too uh, because it can be somewhat challenging for children to access those role, role models at the moment because of everything that comes comes about. But social media is, it sort of breaks that fourth wall in the sense that, you know, school used to be nine to five or a little bit earlier and that was your school hours and outside of that, then it was completely yeah. different. Whereas today it sort of morphs into one, is that right? To a degree, it, it can be a challenge to find that line, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it can sometimes be a little bit challenging, but at the same time, it's nice for me in a strange way, even though it's still about education, to have that break, to be that creative individual, mm. then create that content mm. on the side and, and to, to have something else to focus on. Oh. But with all of us here creating uh, social media content, obviously not Tom. <laughs> Tom doesn't create any social no. media content. Oh dear. But all of us have kind of opened ourselves up to criticism, to, to bashing, to anything that people have to say. We've opened up the doors. Don't you have that fear that students can speak to you that way? Obviously, because your, your, your role as a teacher in the classroom is completely different as someone who is a content creator now. For sure, there's always that, that worry that children will perhaps see something and not necessarily understand what's being created. But that's where the education part is, is important to kind of help children understand that this is part of the world that they're going to, to live in in the future. You know, there will be, like all of us, individuals who are creative both on TV, mm. on social media, so that those people can also, you know, the children who are in the classroom at the moment will also be creating on social media, whether it's for other brands that they work for or for themselves. So that leads me on to a quick one, a little observation. So I've got three kids who are all much better at social media than me. Do you have that sort of uneasy bit where you've got students in your classes who probably do TikTok better, a bit better. Well, not a bit better, that's <laughs> unfair. Have, it, have a better understanding of the potential of. Yeah, I think it's, it's something that is interesting that, you know, children can create that sort of content, but then you can channel that in a certain way. For example, in my school in Kent College, I'm able to create a bit of a club where children have that passion, that interest. So I've got a, a club that's going on at the moment. It's a graphic design club, but we're also integrating certain elements using things and tools like Canva, where children are able to start using videos and graphic design to start bringing those elements into the classroom. So we are directing that creativity. Yeah. I'm really interested about how obviously education has changed a lot since I was at school. So talk about how does the, you know, AI and augmented reality and gamify, you know, all of these buzzwords at the yeah. moment. How, how is that being developed in the schools? So schools have had to adapt kind of post COVID. We've started to see the way that children learn start to change. Children are interested in things like video games mm. and other elements like that. So we've started as educators to think, right, how can we bring that into the classroom? So it might be that we're starting to bring games into the classroom. So instead of just doing elements of school uh, and elements of kind of work, mm. we're then bringing that in uh, as a game mm. so that children can access that learning through games rather than just through 
doing written calculations yeah. and those other things. Okay, it, it's, it, 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 for me, it's, it's, it's very clever because uh, obviously a lot of people, when social media first came to the fore, looked at it and went, oh no, this is going to be you know, a, a risk for us. This is something that's going to be not very helpful for the schools. And yet it is a vocation, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. something that people can have very successful careers out of. So why not embrace it from a young age? Absolutely. Just to try and support children with what they perhaps might be doing in the future as part of their career. Yeah. So we're going to take a short break now, but after that break, it's off to the principal's office. We must go. We are going to be meeting the boss of Arbor School. Stay with us for that. We've also got our spotlight for tonight, which you don't want to miss. Don't go anywhere.